All right, hey guys, sorry. I didn't realize it was recording. Okay, so we're going to be doing adding and subtracting rational numbers, and in this case, we're going to do fractions. So to add fractions with different denominators, first thing we need to do is to rename the fractions using the least common denominator right here. And then we're going to go into our integer rules because, as you notice, some of these fractions are positive and some of them are negative. So, same signs, add the fractions, different signs, subtract the fractions. And if you're subtracting, we're going to use our leave change inverse rule, where you change the problem to addition and use the additive inverse. And if necessary, you're going to simplify your answer. Some ways of finding common denominators is I look at the two denominators that I have and I decide, can I make the smaller denominator into the bigger denominator? Meaning, can I multiply something by 3 to get 4? And in this case, I can't do anything. So a really good trick is to always multiply the two bottom numbers. Love my flower pen. It's very distracting. Sorry. So what I'm going to do, actually, it depends. Sometimes I like to write them up and down, and sometimes I like to write them uh, side to side. So it's up to you how you like them done. If I multiply the two denominators together, 3 times 4, I get 12. So that will be a great denominator, and that trick always works. So if I ever get stuck, I can always multiply the two denominators together to get a common denominator. So what did I multiply 4 by to get 12? I just multiplied it by 3. So whatever I do to the denominator, I'm going to do to my numerator. And that is going to be 1 times 3 is 3. And since this fraction was negative, this fraction will also just stay negative. Okay. Up here, 3 times 4 got me 12. So I also have to multiply the numerator times 4. 2 times 4 makes 8. And now I'm going to add these together. Because they have different signs, different signs subtract. So in my head, I'm counting 8, and I'm counting backwards 7, 6, 5. So my final answer is 5 twelfths, and it will be positive because the 8 has a larger value than the 3. 5 twelfths, final answer. Not too bad, right? A couple of steps, but not too bad. All right, moving over here. Same thing. I can multiply these two by themselves if I want. Um, but actually, what I want to do first, I want to change this into addition first. It will make my life a lot easier. Leave, change subtraction to addition, and the inverse of negative 2 ace is just going to be positive 2 ace. So much easier to do now. I'm going to write them upside. I'm going to write them on top of each other, up and down. And again, I ask myself the question, can I make the smaller denominator into the bigger one? Because it will save me a little bit of time. And in this case, I can. I can multiply 4 times 2 and make 8. So I'm going to also multiply my numerator by 2, and I'm going to get 6. The best part about this is I don't have to change the second fraction. I can leave the denominator exactly the same. Because I'm adding, I'm going to add the numerator, 6 plus 2. And I get 8 over 8, or that's one whole. Okay. So now what I want you to do is pause the video, and with a partner, name is our partner symbol, I want you to come up with what is a good common denominator for this guy, and what is a good common denominator for this guy, before we even get into the subtracting. So pause the video and talk with your partner. One person decides on this one, one person decides on this one. Okay, if you unpause the video, that means you're ready to go over this. So, talking about 8, eight and 5, I cannot make 5 into 8. So, the second option I have to do is I can count by 8s, which I don't know if you know your 8 times tables, but I can count by 8s until you get a number that 5 goes into. The other trick is we can just multiply the two numbers, the two denominators together, and get the number 40. That works every single time, so don't get frustrated about that. So now, so one denominator that could have worked would be 40. That would be the least common denominator, but then there could have been a higher numbers also. So hopefully you got 40. Now I want you to copy the rest with me. Leave, change, inverse. This is going to become negative. I'm going to write it, rewrite it this way. And I'm going to use that denominator of 40 
to add these guys up. 8 times 5 makes 40. So times 5 here. Negative 1 times 5 makes negative 5. 5 times 8 makes 40. So times 8 up here would get me negative 16. Again, same sign. So I'm going to add 16 plus 5, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So my final answer is going to be negative, because it's two negative numbers, 21 over 40. Now, over here, there could have been a couple different answers for a common denominator. You could have had a common denominator of... You could have a common denominator of 6. You could have also done 18. And you could also do much larger numbers, but those are probably the two that you probably came up with. So again, I'm going to leave change inverse, this subtraction problem, and I'm changing it into an addition problem. So copy that down with me. Pause the video if you need to. I'm going to use the least common denominator. That way I do not have to change that 6. So this guy stays exactly the same. I just have to figure out 3 times what makes 6, and that's 2. 1 times 2 makes 2. And now I look at my adding problem, and I have to come up with my adding rules. This is different sign subtract. So I subtract. Well, 3 minus 2 would get me 1, 6. And then what kind of answer is it going to be, positive or negative? The negatives are going to win because 3 has a larger value. Okay, so now there are practice problems. There are two here on the front, and there are two more practice problems on the back up top. But then there are also just right challenge problems. So if you were really up for a challenge, I would do these four questions here. If you think you, you have it, sort of, and you just want some more practice, you can do the first four questions, the two on the top and the two from the front page. You can also do these with a partner if you feel more comfortable. Just make sure that you're working hard. Pause the video, and when you come back, I will go over all of these questions. But the teachers and the sub also have the answer key for you if you have any questions. So pause the video, get, up, get practicing, and come back when you're ready. All right, it means you're ready. So this is a subtraction problem, so I'm going to start with leave change inverse. This is why we were talking all about that. Ooh, sorry. So we were talking all about that in our first unit because we knew it was going to be so important to use here. Leave change inverse. Okay. Now I have same sign Z because I have two negatives, but I need a common denominator first. And my least common denominator is going to be 4, but you could have also done 8. That would have been another one. Times 2 times 2. This final answer will be negative 5 fourths, which is okay. Um, if you wanted to have simplified it, it would be negative 1 and 1 fourth, but I'm not so worried about the simplifying quite yet, so don't worry about that. If you got negative 5 fourths, then you're doing a good job. Same thing here. It's a subtraction problem. Leave. Change. Inverse. All right, this is going to be a different sign subtract situation, but I need a common denominator first. I cannot make 3 into 5, so my easy trick is to just multiply. Now, there's something called the butterfly method that might be helpful to you. If you look over here, I'm going to show you what that means. It means I'm going to multiply these numbers together and these numbers together. Um, this would get 10 up here, this would get negative 3 up here, and down here would get 15. So watch what that means. Watch my two fractions over here. This would mean that this guy is 10, and this guy is negative 3. So I made two different fractions. The numerators are up here. They have the same denominator. So that's a kind of a cool trick if you want to copy it down. It works every time. You might get some large numbers, but it works every time. So now I'm going to do different signs. Subtract 10 minus 3 makes 7, and the denominator will stay 15, and my answer will be positive because 10 is larger. Moving on to the back. Okay. So once again, it's a subtraction problem. Notice I did a lot of subtraction. Ooh, I did a lot of subtraction problems just to keep us practicing. Leave, change, inverse, because that was something that I know a lot of you struggled on the last test. 
Um, these are going to be different signs to subtract, but I need a common denominator. And unfortunately, I cannot make 4 into 5 um, or 5 into 4. So again, I can use that little butterfly trick. 2 times 5 makes 10. 4 times 4 makes 16. That guy's negative on this side. And then my denominator would be 20. So my two fractions would be 10 over 20 and negative 16 over 20. Pretty cool, right? Different signs subtract. I'm going to subtract and get 6 over 20. And my final answer is going to be negative because the larger value was negative. Now, I might not want to do the butterfly method here because that 16 is a pretty big number. And I would have to do 16 times 8, which is a pretty big number. So instead, I'm going to look and see if I can figure out a number that I can, can I make 8 into 16? And I can by timesing it by 2. Okay, these are going to be different signs subtract, but I subtract them and I get 0, which just means my answer is 0. Wah, wah. All right, it happens. Now, if you do the just right challenge questions, this is your turn. Leave, change, inverse, plus positive four fifths. Now, my denominators were a little more challenging in this one, which is what made it more challenging. Uh, I'd have to use 30 on this one. There's no smaller one. My numerator here would be 24 times 5 times 5 would be negative 10. I'd have to do different signs of tracks. So 24 minus 10. I could either do it on the side or I could do it in my head. But I would get 14 over 30. And positive because 24 is bigger. And that was positive. Next one. 30, 3 over 30 plus negative 6 tenths. Again, common denominator. I would use 30 because I can definitely make 10 into 30 just by multiplying by 3. Negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. And this stays exactly the same. With the different signs subtract, 18 minus 3, 18, 17, 16, 15 is 15 out of 30. And it would be negative because 18 is bigger. Lots to think about when we're doing these. This makes it even trickier because now I included a mixed number, which makes it a little harder. Now, these are actually, these are common denominators. I stopped and notice that, huh? Um, what I could do, since this first fraction is improper, meaning its numerator is bigger than its denominator, crazy, shouldn't happen, but it does. Um, I'm going to now turn this 2 and 1 third into an improper fraction. And you do that by first multiplying 2 times 3. And then your second step is to add on the 1. So 2 times 3 makes 6, plus 1 makes 7. And I keep it over the same denominator. Now, that doesn't look too bad. This would be different signs to subtract. And my final answer, 7 minus 5, would make 2. And it would stay positive. This guy's a little harder because... Another improper fraction with a proper fraction, with a mixed number here. So I'm going to turn this guy into an improper fraction. 4 thirds plus, 4 times 2 makes 8, plus 1 makes 9. I need to have common denominators, so I'm going to write them over here. I can't make 2 into 3, but I can always multiply them to get my final answer. And I can do my butterfly method if I need to. 4 times 2 makes 8 and it's negative and 9 times 3 makes 27. Different signs subtract. 27 to take away 8 is 19 and my answer will be positive because the 27 is larger. Last thing I want you to do is what was the easiest thing about the problems from today but what was the hardest? I want two different answers. So start with the easiest thing today was, the hardest thing today was, because I really want to know what you guys think about these fractions and about using positive and negative numbers in your fractions. I hope you guys had a great day. Uh, I look forward to hearing about how your day went, and I will see you guys soon. Enjoy your weekend. Bye.